He is the man who created Pro Football Talk and is on PFT Live and so many other uh, terrific shows coming off of his creation of ProFootballTalk.com. He is Mike Florio back here in the program. How you doing, Michael? Doing great, Rich. Great to see you in Arizona. Right it was great to you. be out there. Even better to be home. <laughs> Nine long days, travel, and everything that goes along with it. But it was a fruitful and productive week. Your takeaway from Super Bowl 57 is what, Mike Florio? The Chiefs are going to be back here more than a few times over the course of Patrick Mahomes' career, as long as Andy Reid's there, as long as they're continuing to draft and develop young players they can put around Patrick Mahomes, as long as he continues to operate under a very team-friendly contract that's going to get more and more team-friendly as the cap goes up and the market continues to skew toward quarterbacks. And Mahomes, as he said yesterday, this is just the beginning. I quoted Lieutenant Colonel Frank Slade in a post after the game on Sunday night that he's just getting warmed up. Same thing. Two Super Bowl wins in five years as a starter. Could have had more may have more going forward. Tom Brady once went 10 years between Super Bowl wins. I don't think Mahomes is going to do that. He's only going to get better. They're only going to get better. And Tom may want to come back and play for the 49ers next year to get to eight, just to make it a little bit harder for Mahomes to catch him. I know. You know what I mean? Like, it is stupid when you look at Brady's numbers. All of them. All of them. I mean, the fact that he had a Hall of Fame career just as a 40-year-old, right? I mean, they are stupid. But... You can't help but think if there are footsteps possible to be laid down by Mahomes. With him being 27, he'll be 28. If he does play 18 more years, let's just say he does want to play till 45 like Brady, he really does have a shot to get in the area code. For sure, Mike. There's no doubt about it in my mind. Right. They're going to be in contention every single year. Now, look, it's hard to thread that needle to get to the Super Bowl and to win it, but they've been there three times. It would be four if D. Ford hadn't jumped offside in the 2018 game. It would be five if they didn't feel compelled to force-feed the ball to a receiver that we learned after the fact is extremely needy and was unhappy and disgruntled in Tyree Kill when they threw that little backward pass to him to try to get the score to 28-10 instead of 21-10 at halftime, and it got shut down. They would have maybe gone to six if Andy Reid had flipped from Alex Smith to Patrick Mahomes when the offense was stagnant in November of 2017, and Andy Reid kept his word to Alex Smith instead. So we keep going forward. Mahomes has more reps, more games, more looks, more reasons to understand what the defense is going to give him and get rid of the ball before he has to run around with his hair on fire to make something magical happen. That's bad for us. When he stops doing that, when he starts seeing the field the way Tom Brady does and just gets rid of the football, we love those moments where he's got no feet on the ground and his arm is in crazy positions and he makes these things happen. Mm -hmm. But it's just that passage of time, and as he acquires more knowledge and understanding, he's just going to get better and better. And uh, I don't know how long he's going to play, but... When you look at the accomplishments, the total wins, he's just one Super Bowl win behind Brady at age 27. But total wins, he's ahead of the curve. Stats, he's ahead of the curve. And I, I just think that it's going to continue. He had more yards than anyone in NFL history mm. between his passing and his rushing in 2022. It's just incredible to watch, and, and it's going to continue as long as he wants to and barring some sort of catastrophic injury that ends his career prematurely. Well, we know last year uh, after losing to uh, the Bengals, Brett Veach hit hit hard the uh, the defense in the secondary, right? And then the year before that when they lost to Brady, he hit and hit hard that offensive line. The year before that when they won the Super Bowl, he got Mahomes signed long term. What is Brett Veach's first order of business now, do you think? I think that they need to look at the cap numbers for some of the players on defense like Frank Clark and Chris Jones and figure out what to do there. You know, this team is going to have more big-name players exit over the years and then have to replace them around Mahomes. And, you know, it's not just drafting. We're in draft season, and we know that there's a significant bust rate round one, round two, every round. It's a scratch-off lottery ticket. Some are winners, some are losers. But it's not just drafting. It's draft and develop. The Chiefs know how to draft and develop. The best teams know how to draft and develop. You get the right players in that system. You're patient with them. You teach them. You bring them along. Look at what they did with Kadarius Toney was a long-term play. Kadarius Toney can end up being dominant in the NFL once he has a full season to get properly ensconced 
in the velvet of the <laughs> Kansas City offense. That was just on the fly that they got as much out of him. And, you know, that last touchdown, the one to Sky Moore that put the Chiefs up eight, that was a messed up formation. And I saw something somewhere that that was meant for Kadarius Toney. If he has two touchdown catches and that 65-yard punt return, maybe he's the MVP of Super Bowl 57. So the arrow's pointing up, and there isn't that same sense of, of urgency as there was last year or the year before. It's all luxury at this point. They enter the offseason as the Super Bowl favorites, not the Bills. It's the Chiefs again, and I think we appreciate where they are. Still understanding how hard it is to get there and win it. They, they could have lost to the Bengals. They were down 10 points to the Eagles. You know, once we get to the finish and they're holding the trophy, we act like it was easy. It's never easy but they're in great position to continue to be knocking on the door every single year. Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let's talk about quarterbacks now. That's what we uh, always uh, focus on. Derek Carr is a free agent. At some point, Aaron Rodgers will, will emerge with a decision for Green Bay, and then this is the time where Burrow gets paid and Herbert gets paid, and those teams are now going to have to figure out how to win championships with – their contracts being of market value for in the quarterback market. Hertz is due for a contract. And then there's always what's going on with Lamar Jackson. Wh- which domino do you see tumbling first here, Mike? Well, I mean, Derek Carr gets a head start on the open market. He's available to sign with anyone right now. Aaron Rodgers can't be traded until the league year begins. Now they could work it all out ahead of time. Right. And none of the free agents are available. Lamar Jackson can't be in a position to even discuss anything with another team until free agency. And first we have to see whether or not the Ravens apply the franchise tag. I assume they will. I don't think they'll work out a long-term deal. And then the question is, will it be the exclusive tag or the non-exclusive tag? Non-exclusive lets him go out and shop himself to other teams and look for that five-year fully guaranteed Deshaun Watson type structure. But Rich, one thing that, that I continue to advocate, and I feel like the time for it has come, and maybe Joe Burrow is the one to get it because maybe Mike Brown, the owner of the Bengals, is sufficiently willing to go against what the league wants teams to do. I think one of these quarterback contracts needs to be tied to a percentage of the salary cap. Long-term, X percent, 13, 14, 15, 16 percent. You have certainty, not in dollars, but you have certainty in percentage of dollars, the cents on the dollar that go to your quarterback and the rest that's available for the rest of your team. Because there's a balance to be struck. And Jalen Hurts, I think, is going to be the next big test of this because he could push for $45 million or more. Will he do that? Will he put the team in a position where they've got less money available to put talent around him? Will he take the Peyton Manning approach, which was basically, it's my job to maximize my income, it's your job to manage the salary cap? And players get put in this very difficult position. And Sims and I were talking about this today on PFT Live. Mm -hmm. The owners love it because the fans never say, hey, owners, you're doing just fine. Hey, owners, you need to figure this out. Hey, owners, you need to take care of these highly talented players that we are showing up to watch and tuning in to watch and deserve to get more. While you all get plenty and you're riding around in your $300 million yachts, you guys need to pony up and pay. Mahomes is the one who should be the highest paid player in football, and he'll never ask for it, but he should be. I think the best way to get toward that path is to tie it to a percentage of the cap, and the best quarterbacks get that percentage, and as the cap goes up, their pay goes up, and however high the cap goes, that's how high their pay goes. And I think Burrow, I'm not saying he will, but Burrow may be in the best position to pull it off of any of the great quarterbacks we've seen. Some have tried. Darrell Rivas tried, couldn't do it. Kirk Cousins tried, couldn't do it. One of these days, someone's going to do it. And once we cross that bridge, hopefully it won't be an aberration like the Watson deal. Hopefully it will be a sign of things to come because of all players on the field, the quarterback deserves that percentage. Well, I'm glad you mentioned the Watson deal because as of right now, despite, you know, or, or in lieu of your, your, your theory there, what, what, uh, what players are going to go for, um, it, it's the Watson let's get every dollar guaranteed that, that, as we all know, has held up whatever's going on in Baltimore from being a long time relationship with Lamar Jackson and the Ravens a- anybody else do you see do you see the Watson deal uh roosting again this year you know in a way that it did not for Kyler in Arizona and Russ in Denver uh, you, what are you thinking what are you hearing on that front Mike? I think the fact that neither Russell Wilson nor Kyler Murray got five years fully guaranteed draws a circle around Watson as an outlier okay and 
the way Watson pulled it off, and this is one of the benefits of having an agent if you're Lamar Jackson. It's not just go negotiate the best possible contract. An agent explains to Lamar how Deshaun Watson got his five-year fully guaranteed contract, how he was able to convince the Texans to trade him, how he was able to lure four teams to the table to try to persuade him to choose them, how he was able to shrug the Browns to the side at the perfect time after they pissed off Baker Mayfield and they got desperate and they felt like they had to make a big move to get Deshaun Watson's attention again and swung back around with that five-year fully guaranteed contract. There's a lot of planets that got to line up to get yourself in that spot, and it worked for Deshaun Watson. It's going to be hard for Lamar Jackson to do it, and what he's basically going to have to do if the Ravens use that non-exclusive franchise tag, he's just got to say, hey, anybody out there, if you're interested, this is what I want. Let's see if somebody shows up, and I don't know that somebody's going to show up. All it takes is one team, but after the blowback the Browns got last year, it's going to take a lot, I think, to get a team to give up five years fully guaranteed, and two first-round draft picks, which is what would be required if you make Lamar Jackson an offer that he accepts and the Ravens don't match it. And I, I'm, I'll be fascinated to see if somebody does it because the league, the powers that be, management council, other owners, they were pissed off at the Browns for doing it. It'll be interesting to see if somebody else breaks ranks on that again this year. Pro Football Talks, Mike Florio. A few more minutes left with him. The uh, Thursday after Super Bowl 57 right here on the Rich Eisen Show. What do the Jets do at quarterback? What are you hearing there? Because, you know, Rodgers, Peter King, your colleague at NBC Sports came on yesterday, say if the Jets don't get Rodgers, Lamar could be another big swing uh, opportunity for them as well. Do they stick with Zach? Uh, uh, honestly, what, do you, what are you hearing? It's up in I the think air. Derek Carr's one to watch. Todd Downing okay. now the passing game coordinator there, and he was quarterback's coach for the Raiders 2015-2016, offensive coordinator 2017 okay. when Derek Carr was there. I agree completely with what Tiki Barber said yesterday on his WFAN show oh, about boy. Rogers and the delicate genius not being able to handle the scrutiny of the New York media market. He just doesn't like He's one of these guys, and there are people like this who become big celebrities. They want the attention on their own terms. Hey, everybody, look at me. Pause. What the hell are you all looking at? You don't want to be scrutinized. You don't want to be criticized. And, Rich, you know, you can envision, as a Jets fan, what that introductory press conference is going to look like. Of all the teams in the NFL, the people covering the Jets are going to show up, and one of them would say to Aaron Rodgers, Aaron, you were on Pat McAfee's show several weeks ago, and you suggested that all the people in the media who are making you a villain are doing so at the behest of Big Pharma, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson. How can you justifiably accept a paycheck from the Johnson & Johnson heir, not to be confused with the O. Henry heiress, the Johnson & Johnson heir, Woody Johnson? How can you do it? That's hypocritical. Explain yourself. Packers media is never going to ask him a question like that. No other team's media is ever going to ask him that question. That's just a sliver of what life would be like for him in New York. And we should want that because it would be great for business. <laughs> but I don't think it's great for Rodgers. And I don't think he's – if he understands what he's walking into, and supposedly he's really smart, I've heard that before, if he's that smart, he wouldn't do it. So somebody in the Wisconsin media is not going to ask him about shooting down Chinese balloons to keep a, a, an eye away from <laughs> the Jeffrey the Epstein list? Hunter Biden's laptop? Was that the thing that he said the other day? No, I, that, that said, though, the guy walks into New York despite that, that press conference awkwardness and starts throwing touchdowns, and he, he gets the Canyon of Heroes treatment. Uh, the, he'll never be asked a question like that again. But Woody, but Woody here's the thing. Hey, hey, hey Rich. You better, you better throw touchdowns and no interceptions. You better not have a game like he had that Thursday night against the Titans when he misses wide open Sammy Watkins, misses wide open Alan Lazard, and he's getting booed by Lambeau. Lambeau Field booing Aaron Rodgers? Imagine what it would be like in New York if that happens. You know what it would be? He gets banged up, he misses a game, and then they put in some slappy – third stringer who throws for 300 yards and that's the new canyon of heroes guy and they want to get rid of aaron Rodgers. isn't that the jets formula sims rants about that all the time how jets fans so quickly turn on the hero and embrace some guy who just happens to stumble into a good game that would eventually happen to aaron Rodgers. I, if i'm him i'd want no part of that right if i'm him what i'd want to do is go to san francisco and try to prove that i can win another super Bowl. yeah Bowl. I, I don't think, think they'll take that chance but green bay will never let that happen the, that's why the narrative shifts but that, that's why I like the Packers. It was him. Right. No, but uh, that's why I like Vegas for him. 
I mean, he gets to he gets to connect with um, Devontae Adams again. Adams can't wait to get him. Why not? Right. I mean, he goes there. He's he's living out his days like you know. Uh, I wouldn't say Mo Green because that didn't finish up very well for him in Vegas. No, no, that did but, not go well. No, for Mo. spoiler alert. But uh, I'm just you, you you know you finished your football career in Vegas. Uh, he, he, I, I don't know. Um, I, I guess he was a Niner guy living up there in Chico, California, but I, I, tons of Northern California fans would be thrilled to have, you know, have him as the Raiders quarterback. I mean, I asked that of Damian Lillard. He didn't, he didn't stutter on game day morning on Sunday. He wants Rogers. That would, that would be perfect for him. I think. Don't you think? I'm, here's uh, the one, here's the one wrinkle. McDaniels. I don't know that Josh McDaniels would be capable of adjusting his style to account mm-hmm. for the delicate genius <laughs> and not <laughs> coach him hard, not call him out, not tell him. You know the first thing McDaniels would say to him, Rich? Hey, Aaron, here's what we have to do. Well, more importantly, here's what we have to stop doing. You can't go on Pat McAfee's show every Tuesday. You just can't do it. You can't go on there and answer questions about the things we're doing here. I mean, it's the Patriot way. And these guys who leave Belichick – they say they're going to be their own person. They don't realize how deeply ingrained that patriot way has become in them. They think they're doing their own thing. And maybe it's a little modification, variation on the patriot way, but they still, at their core, via osmosis, have picked up many of Belichick's tendencies. And Josh McDaniels knows what Tom Brady does, what he tolerates by way of hard coaching, or at least did while he was with the Patriots until he'd had his lifetime limit of it. Aaron Rodgers is already at his lifetime limit of that. He doesn't want to be called out in meetings. He doesn't want video to be shown of his bad decision and how he freelanced. And even if the play worked out, he stepped away from the script. So, again, they tell me Aaron Rodgers is really smart. If that's the case, I don't see him giving in to the McDaniel system. I don't see him leaving. Yeah, so I stay don't put. Think he's going to want to change everything yeah. at this point of his career. I think it's play for the Packers yeah. or retire and I don't think he's going to walk away from 60 million and be, you know, the special guest star to the Tom Brady enshrinement class. Right. And <laughs> Dude, you always spit truth, but I think you put truth serum in your coffee today, man. I mean, this is this is you're 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 in fuego to use the DP Some phrase. Right roll now. out of bed. Rich, yes. and I just know it's going to be one of those days. <laughs> it's today one and, of those days. <laughs> and I wonder, is this going to be good or is it going to be bad when it's time to talk into a microphone or a telephone on a radio show? So <laughs> yeah. hopefully I didn't say anything that's going to get me in any trouble. I but don't I believe everything I said. I don't think you did, Mike. Thanks for the time. It was great to see you in Arizona. Uh, look for my call because, you know, the, the Justin Fields Bears stuff is heating up right now. Is I guess let me ask you that before I let you go. What are you, what are you hearing about the Bears thought process? on the draft as we're in I think it'd be ludicrous. You, you've, you've, I mentioned lottery ticket. You scratch off a lottery ticket, it's a winner. You don't get rid of it. You embrace it. You get the most out of Justin Fields. He was talking with our guys, uh, at pardon my take, about how he wants to play in a dome. By the time they get a dome built, I think he's done. So, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's the one that needs to be thinking about going somewhere else. But the Bears, I think, would be foolish to trade him – and take a shot on another quarterback. Look at the top quarterbacks taken over the past, just the past five years. It is a flip of a coin as to whether or not they work out or not. Why would you want to take that chance again? You just got a guy who's working out, work on making him better, and work on adjusting your offense to get more out of him like the Eagles did with Jalen Hurts. Don't, don't get rid of him. I, I can't believe that there's even a conversation about moving on from Justin Fields well, unless he would want to move on and play for a team that's in a dump. But you know how it works, too. The lottery ticket the Bears are also holding is anybody who falls head over heels in love with Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud. They're holding that ticket saying, come, come, come cash it in right here uh, because you know the Texans are taking somebody. And cash it in right here because if they make it seem like they're taking one of them and they're not enamored with Justin Fields, that's the way that 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 lottery ticket gets scratched off. That's well, the way and, they're playing and Rich, that you game. You got the Texans at two and the Colts at three. Oh you God. can work division rivals against each other and hope that they both fall in love with Bryce Young. And we know that Uncle Jim came out and said it the other day hmm. to the chagrin of Chris Ballard that they really like that Alabama quarterback. You get the Texans and the Colts at the table, and you drive up the price, and you drive up the price, and they're holding up the paddles, and it's going higher and higher, and you get a great 
bounty, and you get multiple lottery tickets. You get a whole room full of lottery tickets. You start scratching them off. You're bound to find some winners. Yeah, or maybe uh, Ursay ran into uh, Namath at NFL Honors, and that's what he's referring <laughs> to. You know, could be that. <laughs> Take care of yourself, Mike. You're, you're the best. See Thanks you, for the call. That's Mike Floor, everybody. At Pro Football Talk. Follow him. I do. You should. Great stuff. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 